earlier this week, I put out a leak detailing early Zen 4 Vcash performance estimates. Specifically, I received from one of my best sources, one of those people that got me the Bergamo codename before anyone else, I was given an internal study AMD had done on A0 silicon of Zen 4, comparing it to Zen 3 final silicon, both of those with Vcash variants. And, well, long story short, and you really should watch that video if you haven't yet, AMD concluded that apples to apples, Zen 4 to Zen 4 with Vcash, both A0 silicon, you could expect up to around a 30% performance increase. In that same test, they found a 10 to 15% performance increase from Zen 3 to Zen 3 with Vcash, which is actually about what you would expect, if not honestly, sometimes lower than what some results were for gaming on a 5800X 3D over a 5800X. Even more exciting was that I communicated in this same video that they were pulling up the launch of the Zen 4 X 3D products. Now, I've been, always been saying that it was probably not coming out this year, but it was probably also going to come out in the first half of next year. Well, now I've had a couple more sources get back to me after seeing the video, as often happens, honestly, and it sounds like it's quarter one. Specifically, it's quarter one for Raphael X, and quite possibly quarter one or quarter two for Genoa X as well, according to another source I reached out to. AMD has Vcash pretty much working right now. They got it working with Zen 3. They started working on the second generation of Vcash immediately, and it's gonna follow on to Zen 4 much quicker than it did for these initial Zen 3 launch. And so it's really no surprise. A lot of people have been speculating about this. Why doesn't the initial lineup have a 7800X? Well, it's pretty obvious. AMD is going to have the 7600X 6 core, 7700X 8 core, and then the 12 core and the 16 core standard Zen 4 variants ready for a full launch in September. And they'll be revealing it very soon, it turns out. But the Vcash variants are going to have to wait, but not wait that much. There's really no point in AMD launching a 7800X right now. Any higher clocking versions of the 8 core CCDs, AMD can just save for. Well, a 7950X 3D and a 7800X 3D. Yes, there's a huge price gap that will likely be there between the 7700X and the 7900X 12 core. But at the same time, it's going to be filled right in the middle of there by a 7800X 3D that will one of the multi-threading performance in most applications that the 7900X has. It's probably going to have 20 to 35% higher gaming performance than the 7700X. And I think AMD is going to go, yeah, we think you'll spend the extra 50% on that if you're a gamer. Which, speaking of Zen 4 performance, I actually want to take a second in this first half of the video to address Zen 4 performance overall and what will likely go down with performance claims between Intel and AMD in a couple of months from now. You see, there's a lot of people that have been arguing about if Zen 4 or Raptor Lake will crush each other on desktop. And frankly, I've been pretty outspoken all year that they're just going to be close. It doesn't really matter. They're going to be close in single threading. They're going to be close in multi-threading. And at the end of the day, if you're a gamer, though, the Vcash models of Zen 4 are coming in there almost certainly going to win all gaming benchmarks handedly. And so when you see people quote Cinebench or what I would call Gracemont Bench R23, I really don't think AMD cares that the 7700X seems to be about the same single threading performance as an i5-13600K and multi-threading performance that could be 10 to 20% worse. You know, at the end of the day, I'm starting to understand why AMD just is still cocky behind the scenes about Zen 4. They know they're going to launch first. They know they're going to be more efficient. They know they have the better platform. And they likely think they have a pricing advantage. And the performance at a minimum at everything is going to be close. And they have the Vcash models right around the corner anyway. So, yeah, I think where AMD is sitting is a pretty good position to be in. And I guess one more thing I want to say, too, is I know a lot of people are going to point to Cinebench, which is something that Alder Lake and Raptor Lake are going to especially excel at. And th I've seen a lot of people saying that it's not fair that AMD might not focus on Cinebench this time around because how is that any different than when Intel obsessed about real-world performance when AMD was winning Cinebench? I just want to say this. When Intel was talking about real-world performance, I think a lot of people are, well, just entirely freaking forgetting 
what Intel called real-world performance. I don't think most people buy an i9 so they can frickin' save PDFs 1% to 8% faster. Those real-world benchmark charts that Intel put out when they were real-world losing at everything, they were the most insanely odd and perplexing cherry-picked benchmarks. But if you go to someone like Tech Power Up and you look at you know, actually real-world things like Unreal Engine development or using Corona or WinZip, AMD still does fine against Alder Lake with even Zen 3. And so when I see that Raptor Lake is going to win Grace Mop Bench R23 by 10% or something, I really don't think AMD cares because they know they're going to trade blows at everything else in single and multi-threading performance. And again, Vcash is right around the corner. But here's the thing. I'm not even sure that Raphael X, you know, the AM5 desktop consumer version of Zen 4 with Vcash is going to be the biggest problem for Intel early next year. I've already told you that I'm hearing about Genoa X engineering samples preparing to be sent out to some customers for testing right now. AMD has Vcash ready for a whole host of products and I don't see why they wouldn't have a Dragon Range X product for laptop as well, launching probably half a year before Meteor Lake is even out. And I want to talk about that and Intel's future of mobile computing, but first an ad from a sponsor. As you can see, my dog Reese here has a schedule that's almost as busy as mine when we're at the office during a workday. And because of this, we're both always looking for an efficient lunch that we can make quickly that's also very healthy. And we've solved the problem with Vite Ramen, who's a sponsor of this piece of content. Vite Ramen is an eager American company that's crafted a protein and nutrient-dense meal that takes minutes to make without sacrificing taste. This includes their classic packages that make it easy to add protein and other ingredients of your choice while cooking, or their new ramen go packages that offer a healthy microwavable option for those who truly only have a 15 minute lunch break. Click on the link in the description and use the offer code broken silicon to save 10% on a variety of different products, including special bundles for Moore's Laws Dead fans, raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipe, Vite Go packages and other food products and cooking utensils and more. Whatever you prefer, using these offer codes helps support this channel tremendously and it gets you a good deal for a healthy, fast, and tasty, reliable sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead. Try Vite Ramen today. All right, so already in this video, I've confirmed that Zen 4 X3D is coming to desktop early, early next year. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if AMD showed off Zen 4 Vcash variants, well, <laughs> as early as this month, and I would be just completely floored if they didn't show something off before the end of the year in some teaser video to let people know that if you want the best gaming performance, don't buy Raptor Lake, wait a couple of months and just get Zen 4 with Vcash. But that's not the only thing they have coming. I kind of glossed over one of the bigger bombshells here. Now, We've all been hearing about Dragon Range for a while now. Up until now, AMD has been focusing on conquering really the 15 to 45 watt segment of laptops. They wanted to, they didn't have the money to make everything, and so they just wanted to do what they thought was the most important niche well. And they thought the most important niche in laptops is 15 to 45 watt SOCs, and that's what Renoir, Saison, and Rembrandt have focused on. But Moving forward, AMD has more money. They can afford to make bigger things. And one of those things was something that I called in previous leaks, Raphael H. Something that I was tipped off to, honestly, I don't even remember how long ago, but many months ago at least, that it was basically repackaging the exact same uh, core chiplets in Zen 4 Raphael for desktop into a smaller compact package to fit into laptop so they can more directly compete with Intel's uh, 65 to 125 watt desktop replacement or extreme enthusiast gaming laptop models. Earlier this year, AMD confirmed that this would be called Dragon Range, the Dragon Range family of products. And it was immediately clear to me this was Raphael H when in one of their official slides, they had a blurb that said higher core counts, thus inferring, no, this isn't some enhanced version of Phoenix. This really, truly is moving up to 16 cores on laptop. And that's really exciting. Now, I have occasionally had comments appear saying, hey, is AMD going to put Vcash on APUs? Hey, is AMD going to bring Vcash to laptops? And all I was ever able to say is, 
they could, but I don't have any information on that. Now, this week I was able to reconfirm that Dragon Range, I reached out to a source just to make sure, hey, this thing really is literally just Raphael, right? And I was told, yes, even the Iodai. The Iodai, the core chiplets, it's literally just Raphael. There's literally no reason Amy couldn't put Vcash on this. We'll have to see what happens with Phoenix. When it comes to Raphael, H, or Dragon Range, there's no reason there couldn't be a Dragon Range X. And that is... Really exciting because I want to, I have to be clear, I cannot confirm from any source yet that there will be a Dragon Range X, but I don't see why there wouldn't be. Why would there not be at least one experimental model to try it out in the market? The, I don't know, R97980 HX3D. Why not? They can do it. There's no doubt they can do it. And if they did, this would be such a raffle stomp thing in enthusiast laptop gaming, I don't know how AMD could miss this opportunity. I mean, really think about it. Right now, what we know is that Raptor Lake is going to be competitive with Zen 4. Maybe win by like 5% or something in gaming, we'll see, um, on desktop. But in doing so, they'll probably be using like 20 to 50% more energy. Okay, so Intel can match AMD with an older node while using more energy. Not really a surprise there. But what can they do on laptop? I don't think they can do anything to combat this because I do believe Raphael H will be able to be downclocked enough to fit in a 65-watt package for 80% of the performance. But think about what that means. If you then add Vcash on top of Raphael H, on top of Dragon Range, yes, it might be like capped at 5 gigahertz instead of 5.7 or 5.8 gigahertz for the top model. But that Vcash should make up the difference in gaming performance. And what AMD could then say is, hey, we don't really beat the i9-13900K with this laptop cheap, but we trade blows in gaming. They could say, this is i9 desktop class performance in a thin and light 15-inch notebook. That would be something that Intel just couldn't touch. Like, AMD could literally advertise that they're beating Intel's desktop processors in gaming with a laptop chip. And then when they compare it to Intel's massively throttling Raptor Lake mobile chips, it could be just the biggest bloodbath we've seen since Saison versus Comet Lake. Furthermore, you cannot convince me that something like a 7980HX3D wouldn't also dominate in some professional engineering and simulation applications. That for a workstation laptop, this 16-core processor with mountains of cash would be a godsend to professionals that, again, I just don't think Intel could touch. And coming to this realization this week, confirming with some sources that, well... It isn't confirmed to be launching as a real thing yet, but that it's 100% possible. It's really made me take a step back and go, I just I just don't know what Intel's going to do in mobility next year. I mean, at the end of the day, Raptor Lake Mobile is launching on the same node Alder Lake Mobile is. It's already behind Rembrandt in efficiency. And Phoenix is on 4 nanometer, and it's just going to blow it out of the water. And then on top of that, they're going to have... Intel's desktop class level of performance in 65 watt laptops. It's it's crazy. And from what I'm hearing, there are several Strix variants coming out by early 2024 as well, right around when Meteor Lake is expected to actually be viable. And I don't know. I guess what I'm just saying is that Intel has an upward battle here moving forward with their SOCs. But there is one thing that gives me a bit of hope here. And I want to be clear about what I'm saying. Alder Lake was a big deal. I was excited about it. I leaked Golden Cove and its performance level first, and it was great. But I just feel like 2022 is going to be remembered as a rough year for Intel, and 2023 is not going to be much better. But moving forward, with their Hot Chips presentation, seeing Intel's plans for a multi-tile approach, not just so that they can combine things from multiple nodes once, but also upgrade products over time as new nodes and tiles become available. In other words, it's entirely conceivable that what Intel does with Meteor Lake is they're like, okay, so we got Redwood Cove tile here, and then we also have a you know this generation of graphics here. As a Battle Mage tile comes out, what if that gets done before Lion Cove for Arrow Lake's done? 
They could just, oh, here's the new upgraded Battle Mage SoC gaming APU. And then, boom, right when Lion Cove's ready to go, they throw that on top of that, and they start getting ready to put a Celestial graphics tile in there. Then, oh, we got a new AI engine or whatever. We got a new memory controller we can add. I do like seeing this, at least. This should, at least, theoretically, help Intel start catching up in mobile rapidly and i believe they also basically hinted that this also will make it easy once a mobile variant is out to add a bigger cpu tile and then launch a desktop variant as well and that's what i think they're doing with meteor like desktop i think they're launching the six plus eight tile first for mobile and they're working on the eight plus 16 tile for desktop they'll just throw that in there and throw it out into the new socket 1851 so that's at least exciting. That's at least cool. And I don't think there's any reason to believe Intel won't have possibly a fantastic 2024. But I got to say, realizing the implications of a Dragon Range X, which there's no reason AMD can't make this, I think it's just going to be another rough 2023, following a rough 2022 for Intel. But uh, yeah, at the minimum... What I would say is by the end of next year, we're going to have laptops that aren't just as good as current desktop performance, but are like beating current desktop performance in thin and light form factors. And that's, that's just really exciting. And I would think that you won't want to miss the upcoming videos from this channel that will cover all of them. If you don't want to miss them, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, Moore's Law is Dead, ring the bell button, tell your friends about us, and then also consider supporting us on Patreon. That helps so much to have that consistent income coming in, and you're rewarded with tons of exclusive content, early ad-free versions of Broken Silicon, the ability to ask me and guest questions. In fact, right after this video comes out, there will be a die shrink going over the biggest revelations from Hot Chips with Moore's Law's Dead contributor Carbon Cry. We go through really fascinating conversations on what NVIDIA has just revealed about Orin means for the Nintendo Switch 2, about, you know, when Intel is likely to catch up to AMD and laptop efficiency, looking over all the hot chips presentations, it's it's something there for patrons that you won't want to miss. And uh, besides that, though, no matter what, thank you for watching.